What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video, Cup of Code 01. So, as promised uh, yesterday, doing the missing number question, um, where we're given uh, two different arrays, in this case, are lists in Python. Uh, this is one list array, and this is a second list array. Um, the second list is a shuffled version of the first list. In addition, it's missing one of the numbers. We wanted to compare the two and find out what the missing number was. Um, when we did compare the two, uh, we found that we were going to get to an O n squared um, big O notation, which uh, is not efficient. Uh, when we're talking about scaling and actual real numbers. So we wanted to have a different solution. So let's goodbye. We want a different solution to the same the same format that would get us to a better uh, performance level in, in the computer. Um, so this is a second way of doing this array. Not the most efficient. There's going to be another one that we're going to do. So first off, what I want to do, I actually want to use a library that exists within Python called Collections. So we're importing collections, and this is going to allow us to use something called the default dictionary. Um, this is how we can avoid uh, errors if there's a missing key value combo. Um, and again, makes sense as we go along. So we're gonna define the finder, and again, we have array one that we're using and array two that we're passing through. That's it for our arguments that we're gonna be using within this. So what I wanna do is we're gonna call the library and from that library, like I said, we're using something called default, whoops, there it was, default dictionary, and use that from that, we're gonna pass through an integer. Now this default dictionary, you can always read the documentation, but again, it's just gonna allow us to avoid any error from missing a key within the dictionary, because what we're gonna be doing in this, in this example, we're gonna be adding keys to the dictionary. So what I wanna do, it's gonna be a for loop, not a nested for loop, but just a for loop, for the number in array two, what I want to do is I want to get the, the that number from that index position, and we're going to do a plus equals one. So what does this mean? This is going to be the setting key in the, the dictionary that we created, D. So we're creating a setting key, so it's going to equal um, that number that's within that array. And again, you'll see this as we, do, as we debug it, and it's going to create the setting key that we're going to use in the dictionary. So if we try to use this code with a normal dictionary, we'd get a key error. Uh, because the number is not already keyed but in, but since we're using the collections.default dict, it's going to create the dictionary for us and avoid the missing key errors. So what I'm going to run now is, this is now remember, this is not nested. We have two loops, but it's still going to be, uh, it's not nested, so we're still, we're still legit. Um, so for number in array one, we don't want to leave him out, right? If the dictionary, and we're indexing for that particular number, equals zero, equals an index of zero, we want to return that number. Otherwise, or in Python, we say else, always going to say else, give me, oops, this is simply, and this should make sense to you, minus equals, whoops, one. We're just going to do the opposite here that we did above. And again, not going to make all the sense in the world to you, but it will as we go through this. So, with that being said, let's simply call our function. Oh, I'm going to copy and paste actually this above. Uh, just so we're consistent. And... Let's debug missing numbers. So... Oh, darn it. What do we have here? Scripts. One second. So as you can see, when I tried to debug it, I immediately got hit with an error, and uh, PyCharm automatically brings up the file uh, within Python that is giving me the error. Um, it has to do with streaming tokenizing, so when I go back to missing numbers, I can see that it was my screw-up. In syntax, I put for num r1. What about r1? It's got to be in r1, otherwise I'm not going to get anywhere. Ugh, dumbass. So, run. Hey, it happens. Those are the biggest issues we find. <laughs> I hit, so be it. So we're gonna FA through, so we're importing collections. So now collections is loaded in. We call, went to define finder, but it's not gonna run a function that we could we, until we call it. So now we're calling finder function and we have our two arguments, array one and array two. So now in memory, it had, but why did it not do that now? Come on, I have that. Why did I lose my debug? Let me bring this up a little bit so I can see what's going on in the console. 
you give me the number five, and it's correct, it's the number five. But I want to see the debugging. It's not it's not connecting to the debug server. Give me one second. And again, my error. Let me get more coffee. I'll show you exactly what happened. I had the debugger on import collections. So there's no reason for it to do what I wanted it to do. So I want to debug my function. So now we can debug through the function. Now I'm going to call the function. Now it better go to the D. All right, sweet. <laughs> so if you put your uh, debugger on the collection or the library you're trying to import, in this case collections, it's not going to run debug through your function. It's going to debug through collections. All right. So now we have our array number one, our array number two within memory. And now we have d equal collections dot default dict. And I want to call integers on that. So when I F8 through there, it creates the variable D and it's giving me the method default dictionary from the collections library. And it's telling me now, I'm, I told it I want it to be an integer class. And you can just see we have an empty dictionary created, an empty dictionary for us. So it's gonna avoid these key errors that we would have had if we tried to do this the old school way. For, for number in array two. So the first number in array two is a three. Again, we did not sort anything at this point. So we have D num equals d num plus one that's what that's going to mean we've seen that before so we have number three so you can see three is the key and a value of one why because the value at that point was going to be zero for num in array two even though it was three is because there was nothing in that dictionary yet so we're going to f8 through there the second number is a seven within our array two so now we're going to have f8 through there so now it's going to give me a key of seven with also a value of one. Because again, in that key of seven, there was no value. So it's counting the values that we're going through. We're gonna see if we have any repetitive uh, numbers. So two, one, one, we should put one, one, yep. Yeah. And then four, we don't have a four yet, so it should be four, one, in terms of keeping count in the dictionary. And then six, we don't have a six yet, so it should be six, one. And that should be it. I'm gonna, I just want you guys to be able to see the whole thing. All right, we got the whole thing now. So all we did by going through this first for loop was saying for array number two, if the number is, uh, we wanted to create a key value pair in the dictionary. That's why we're using the default dict from collections. And we want it to be essentially be a counter. So when it first went through three, when it was num three, the number in the dictionary for three was zero. So it was gonna give me a one. If it was already, if there was already a three within the dictionary, then it would have gave me a two, would it counted. So if we came, let me actually do it uh, so you can see what I'm talking about. Let's say I did, I'm gonna do it for seven so we see it go through. Uh, I'm gonna run the debug. Actually, let me do this first. Let's put it on soft wrap so that it's a little bit cleaner. And now let's run the debug. Missing number. I'm gonna F8 through this already because we did this. We want to create our dictionary. 3171. Now watch what happens. We're gonna go 72. Number is one. We don't have a one yet. Number is four. We don't have a four yet. Number is six. We don't have a six yet. Seven. So now in memory, we have the number seven from the second array. There's already a seven in our dictionary, and it has a key of seven, a value of one. So now it's going to be if I take denum in the dictionary for the number seven, the value is already one. So now it's going to be one plus one. So when I go through this line, it better change it to two. So sure enough, it did. So all it's doing is counting the um, occurrences of each element within that array number two. Uh, I just want to get that back out so we're not screwing with this. And so you're not wasting time. We're just going to go through that again. All right. So we went through this whole loop. So for array two, we created a dictionary now, and it has each of the elements of array two and its count. So you can see each one only happens one time. Now for number in array one, now we're in array one here. We want to do the same thing. We want to create a dictionary, but we're going to go backwards. Sorry, we're not going to create. We're just going to, we're going to subtract from this dictionary that we created. And this will make sense again as we go through it. So we're saying if the number, so the first one, let's just do it, F8. So it's gonna give me 
for number in array one, so that's gonna give me number one in this case. You can see a number was one up here. We're saying if the in the dictionary for number one, if it equals zero, return the number. Otherwise, subtract one. So one before, if I look in array number two, one happens once. But when I look in the uh, in the default uh, the D, the dictionary D that we created, the number one here has a key one has a value of one. So it should turn to zero. We're taking away that value when I execute through it. So sure enough, key one has now has a value of zero. So now we're gonna go through the next one. Watch the number appear change. So we're gonna F8 through there. Now for number in array one, array one, the second index number here is number two. If in the dictionary created D, the number two equals zero, return the number. Well, the number two has a key of two, a value of one. It does not, that's false. So it's gonna run down to the else statement, F8. And the else statement says, in the dictionary, the number two, the key number two equals whatever the value is right now, one minus one. So that's gonna to change to zero also. So now it gets to zero. So what you're gonna see is you wanna see the value go down by one for each of these each of these instances in array one that exists within our dictionary. And when it got to the let, when it was done, when it got to, uh, I wanna show it to you. Poops. No, I don't wanna do that. So I wanna to get to when everything is almost, so, all right, we're down to just two numbers in array one that exist, seven and six. And we already know that the, the number that's missing, which is number five, is not even in the dictionary. So I'm gonna F8 through, now the number is five, all right? Five exists in the first array. It does not exist in the second array. You can almost see a cutoff there. It does not exist in the, can I go a little bit? Yeah. It does not exist in the second array. So it can't do that code at all. So let's go F8 through there. So number is five, return the number. And this is what I wanted to show you. So five, if in the dictionary we created D, the number five equals zero. Five, it doesn't exist, it has to equal zero. Return the number. So it's gonna, it better return number five to me. F8 through there. So F8, so it returns the number five. It finished running that code. So you can see that it didn't even have to go through six and seven because once we got through this return the number, it then jumped out of that loop. And that loop was then just to return that number. And that's exactly what it did, we returned the number. We didn't have to adjudicate the list anymore for six or seven because we found the missing number. So the advantage of this code here was simply that we didn't have a nested loop anymore. Now we had, just two different for loops. Um, and we were taking, we wanted to create a dictionary using the uh, key value pairs for the array number two. So the key was the number of the array and the value is how many times that number shows up. And then in the second for loop, we are then taking that dictionary and we're subtracting the value for those keys that exist in array number one. And we're saying, if you have that key and a value, subtract one from it so we can get a zero. But if you don't have a key or the key's value is zero, return that number. And that's how we got the missing number in this case. So as you can see, nothing crazy, a different way of doing the same, getting to the same conclusion, uh, but with a very different big O functionality in terms of complexity, uh, which again has massive implications when we're talking about scaling. So tomorrow's video, um, same exact problem, same exact situation. However, we're gonna be doing it where we have a linear time in constant space, meaning a big O of N. Uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna be a linear big O um, in a very, very simple way of doing it, even less code than we have here. Um, but it's just uh, to exemplify how we can manipulate algorithms to get different performance in the PC. With that said, guys, have an excellent day.